one of Tesla's most popular products, is very rarely even spoken about. However, Tesla makes a lot of home battery packs. In fact, a lot more than most people are aware of. They have so much demand, they had to stop orders for quite a long time this year in order to try to catch up to that demand. However, Tesla has a new version of the home battery pack coming out. It's going to mean a better product and more of them to deliver to customers. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to the new subscribers and welcome back everyone else. Over the past 12 months, we've made about 1,000 videos about the electric revolution. A lot of people aren't aware, but a really, really important key part to having clean energy and a sustainable future for everyone, and to be honest, a much cheaper future for everyone on their own power bills, is by not only having electric cars, but also solar and battery storage at home. In a recent meeting with Tesla employees, it was revealed that Gigafactory Nevada is hitting its stride in production of the company's battery storage products like Powerwall and Megapack. Powerwall, they're the smaller batteries that go on the side of your home or on the side of like small businesses. Megapack, they're the batteries for bigger businesses and for even states and cities and those kinds of things. Here in Australia, Tesla actually delivered the world's biggest battery a few years ago, which was hugely successful. And since then, more and more countries around the world have begun asking Tesla to install large battery packs to power thousands of homes, if not hundreds of thousands of homes. In addition to that, they're also used as peaker plants. When energy use is high, like for example in California or in parts of Australia, when it gets really, really hot, of course, everyone turns on their air conditioners, and then what happens? The power either goes out, or picker plants, usually run by fossil fuels such as gas, turn on. Those picker plants are really expensive to run. However, big batteries, like Tesla's big battery packs, can become virtual picker plants and make energy much cheaper. Gigafactory Nevada underwent leadership changes this year, with former Vice President of Gigafactory Operations, Chris Lister, leaving this summer. Taking his place is Hrushi Sagar, who was promoted to oversee Giga Nevada. Sagar, who is also overseeing the Fremont factory, will be reporting directly to Elon Musk. So obviously, if this guy is overseeing Fremont and Nevada, then you can clearly see that he's been successful, he's good at his job, and also he's probably um, well-liked by Elon himself as well. On Thursday, Sagar held a meeting, according to Tesorati, with hundreds of Gigafactory employees. During the meeting, whose audio and documents were shared with CNBC, Cigar and other Tesla executives talked about management changes, factory milestones, and some ambitious goals for Tesla's facilities. What are those goals? Well, yeah, there's some pretty impressive stuff going on here. EV ramp, battery ramp, car ramp, lots of ramp, lots of ramping. Ramp, ramp, ramp. Gigafactory Nevada does not produce vehicles. It manufactures batteries and battery packs predominantly. Unlike Giga Shanghai, Giga Berlin, and Giga Texas, it focuses on the unsexy side of the business. Instead, the facility is tasked with the production of 2170 batteries and powertrains that are used in Model 3 and Model Ys. However, they will be making 4680s as well, probably by about middle of next year. Gigafactory Nevada also produces key Tesla energy products such as the Powerwall, a battery for residential customers, and the Megapack, a battery that's designed for commercial use. However, something is going to change soon because Tesla does plan on using lithium-ion phosphate battery cells in their Powerwalls and Megapacks. Why are they planning on using lithium-ion phosphate? Well, if you've been watching this channel for a while, you would know, so you can just skip this section. Because lithium-ion phosphate batteries are cheaper, they're more abundant. I mean, you don't need nickel. You don't need manganese. You don't need cobalt. You don't need aluminium for lithium ion phosphate batteries. And those battery packs last longer. But more important than any of that, really, 
It's just the availability of those batteries. More than likely, what Tesla will begin doing is shipping batteries from CATL's factory in China, battery cells, shipping those cells to the factory in Nevada, where they'll be assembled into power packs and mega packs. Cigar noted that the Fremont factory has been on a roll producing 134,000 vehicles in the second quarter of 2022, putting them at a run rate of about 540,000 vehicles per year. He added that Fremont is now able to produce 12,000 vehicles per week, and the factory wants to increase this to 14,000 cars per week. Doing the numbers, right? 14,000 times 52, that is 728,000 cars per per year. Right, we know that Gigafactory Shanghai has ramped up to a production run rate of 1.2 million per year. If Fremont's able to do the same, ramp up to their goal of 14,000 per week, putting them at 730,000 per year, that's 1.9 million cars coming out of just two factories. 1.9 million. Obviously, if we add Texas and Germany into the mix, plus a potential factory in Canada. We're looking at probably about five and a half million cars coming out of just those, maybe even six million cars coming out of just those factories within the next few years. Of course, yes, Canada hasn't been officially confirmed, but it looks as though it's pretty likely. Now, Cigar claimed that while he does not plan to spend most of his time at Gig Factory Nevada, he does plan to work closely with key people in the facility, such as energy leader Matt Reddick and site leader Eric Montgomery, who noted during the meeting that August 2022 was Giga Nevada's second best month of production, coming second only to October 2021. Montgomery also noted that Giga Nevada has to achieve a steady output of 8,800 high voltage battery packs per week to support the company's aggressive vehicle production plans. 8,800 battery packs per week. That factory does a lot more than people realize. I mean, nobody really talks about Gig Factory Nevada. In fact, it's often forgotten in the whole Tesla discussion, but actually it's really important to the company. And the interesting thing is, when Tesla started building that factory, they had plans to make it the largest factory in the world. Now, those plans haven't really eventuated. It's nowhere near the largest factory in the world. It's very, very big, but there is a good reason for those plans not having eventuated. And really that comes down to Tesla being able to get battery supply from other places where actually the batteries are cheaper, such as CATL in China. And because that battery doesn't manufacture lithium ion phosphate cells, they manufacture lithium ternary cells, they can't actually supply those lithium ion phosphate cells from the factory in Nevada. They have to come from China. Now that may change in the future at some point in time, but it won't be changing anytime soon. More than likely, Tesla will continue to rely upon both CATL and BYD for its lithium iron phosphate batteries over the next five years. However, people do believe Tesla is working on their own lithium iron phosphate cell with a manganese cathode that would increase energy density, but we don't know when that will be released or what's happening with that production. That's a ways off yet. Power walls and mega packs. Power wall production in Gigafactory Nevada is really ramping, like I said before. With the facility exceeding 6,500 units of the battery systems per week, 6,500 per week, and they're still not meeting demand. This shows you just how popular these battery packs really are. Montgomery noted that Giga Nevada produced 37,600 power walls in the second quarter of 2022. And this will increase by 22% in Q3 of 2022. Reddick, for his part, noted that Tesla is on target to produce 442 megapack batteries for the third quarter. If successful, this would represent an 85% growth in megapack production compared to the previous quarter. 85% growth. Now, people have been long criticizing Tesla for their energy division. They're saying, oh, it's irrelevant. It sort of drags the business down. Actually, it doesn't. It supports the business in ways that people don't really understand. This part of the business is more efficient if it's producing more. It's economies of scale. The more batteries that people that Tesla produce for not only cars, but also mega packs and also power walls, the cheaper they actually become. During the meeting, questions were asked about the potential location of the company's next Gigafactory. 
While Sagar noted that he is not at liberty to reveal confidential information about Tesla's plans, he said that the company has some candidates for the next Gigafactory's location. Of course, it's Canada. Anyway, I have some idea of the candidates, but I don't think I'm at liberty right now to disclose those candidates because of the confidentiality around some of those things. There is an exciting future for North America and all around the Americas, Sagar said. Now, I can confirm to you where they will be. Can't guarantee it. But pretty close to guarantee. Of course, we already know Tesla is building another gigafactory in China. What I mean by that? Well, Shanghai will be doubled in size. Now, I have been predicting that for a long time. So have many of you been predicting that for a long time. It just made too much sense. That's where Tesla makes most of its profit from. Shanghai from China. They have heaps of different businesses that have sprung up around that factory to support Tesla's factory there. Doubling production, going from 1.2 million to approximately Tesla, say 2 million, by building another factory right next door, which is already really underway. Permits have been applied for there, is happening. The other factory clearly will be in Canada. It makes too much sense with recent events that have happened in North America, such as the Inflation Reduction Act. Tesla is obviously ramping up big time. BYD is as well. It's going to be very interesting to see how these two compete against each other over the next decade. But remember, really, these guys are taking market share away from the big companies. They're taking market share away from Toyota. Even if you don't see it now, it is about to happen. They're taking market share from Volkswagen. They're taking it from the big players. And the reality is there's more than enough for the two of them to take a lot of market share. Both of those companies will win because they're both doing the right thing. What is that? Building products that people want for the future. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.